It's Monday, August 12. In the headlines, Prime Minister Andrew Holness condemns a brutal gun attack in Clarendon. In business news, NCB Financial Group reports 61% increase in nine months net profit. Regionally, Antigua and Barbuda explores ethical use of AI. And in sports, Jamaica ends Paris Olympics campaign with six medals. This is the news on PBC Jamaica. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has called a special meeting of the National Security Council following a brutal gun attack on a Cherry Tree Lane in Clarendon on Sunday. The Prime Minister says in a statement on social media, quote, We will respond strongly to this act of brutality. I condemn this reprehensible and brutal attack, which resulted in several people in Clarendon being murdered. I extend my deepest condolences to all the families who are affected by this tragedy. End quote. He furthers that the police high command has been advised that all efforts must be extended to bring the perpetrators to justice as quickly as possible. Mr. Holness says, quote, the Jamaican state will not countenance such savagery being meted out to our people. We will respond strongly. We will not relent in our efforts to reduce criminality and we will not surrender our society to criminals, end quote. Reports are that at least eight people were killed and nine others were shot at a bingo party on Cherry Lane. A baby is said to be among the victims hospitalized following the incident. Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Chang, emphasized the government's support for the community and law enforcement. Anyone with information concerning the gun attack on Cherry Lane in Clarendon should tell the police what they know. Following reports of defects along the Southern Coast Highway Improvement Program, China Harbor Engineering Company, Czech, has committed to addressing them. In a statement on the weekend, Czech said it understood its responsibility for quality control on the project, which has come in for criticism, specifically since motorists began noting the deterioration of sections of the roadway from Yalas to Prospect and Morant Bay to Cedar Valley in St. Thomas. Czech also takes full responsibility for works done on the local component sections of the project, significantly done by local subcontractors with no additional cost to the government. The statement reads, quote, as it relates to the remedial works being undertaken between Yalas Salt Pond and Pamphret, please proceed with caution. Obey posted warning signs and instructions of flag persons. It is our intention to have these works completed within the next three weeks, end quote. The statement from Czech follows a visit and a subsequent statement made last week by Minister with Responsibility for Works, Robert Morgan. Well, there would have been lab testing on the quarry that is in the vicinity. And what seems to have happened is that they would have probably um, took material from a vein within the quarry that was not of the quality that was tested. But the good thing about it is that under the South Coast Area Improvement Project, you have a two-year defects liability period, which means after the road is handed over, the contractor, which is China Harbor, is obligated for whatever damage or whatever failure takes place on the road for a two-year period to repair that. It's a four-kilometer stretch, and about 25% of that, about a little bit over a kilometer has to go. About 1.6 kilometers of the, the four kilometer is compromised. The Foreign Affairs and Education Ministries have jointly called for the prohibition of corporal punishment in homes. This appeal was made during Wednesday's preparatory session for the upcoming Global Ministerial Conference on Ending Violence Against Children. More details in this report. 
The decision over whether to spare the rod or spoil the child will be discussed at the Global Ministerial Conference on Ending Violence Against Children in Bogota, Colombia this November. During a preparatory session, State Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Foreign Trade, Orlando Terrellong, emphasized the need to challenge cultural norms around corporal punishment. In Jamaica, statistics show that the majority of cases of violence and abuse against our children happens in our homes. This is a discussion that requires national attention. It also recognizes the need to push back against certain cultural norms if it is that we are to end the physical, emotional, and psychological abuse and violence that is perpetrated against innocent children every single day. Mr. Tarolong, a former state minister of education, says discipline is not to be equated with abusive language or actions. Violence begets violence. And if we raise our children with violence, then we are raising a nation of perpetrators of violence and the cycle of violence continues. And so whilst there are some who will say, but am I pitney? I me for grow them, I me bond them, I me can't take them out if me want. No one is indicating that you can't discipline your children. What we are indicating is positive discipline, discipline with love. Discipline does not mean you go pick off the branch off of the ackee tree and murder them with lick or me kill you with lick. Discipline does not mean using the sort of verbal or psychological abuse to he reminded everyone that the purpose of discipline is to guide and correct. I'm saying it very softly because I do understand the implications whenever one speaks about violence against children. But as a nation, we have to have that discussion that says violence begets violence and we can discipline our children with love and understanding and positivity. Discipline is meant to correct, not to shame, embarrass, humiliate, or to leave physical scars. The state minister further stressed that tackling the issue of violence against children requires the support of all stakeholders, with parents playing the most crucial role. For the news on PBCJ, I am Danita Rodney. In the business report, passive income is being paid out or announced to investors who participate in the local stock market through three companies this week. Epley Caribbean Property Fund Limited, SCC, has declared a dividend of 25 per share Barbados dollars payable on September 9, 2024 to shareholders on record as at August 23, 2024. The ex-dividend date is August 23, 2024. Epley Limited has declared a dividend of 52 cents Jamaican per share payable on September 13, 2024 to shareholders on record as at August 23, 2024. The ex-dividend date is August 23, 2024. Barita Investments Limited has advised that at a meeting of its board of directors to be held on August 15, 2024, an interim dividend payment will be considered. NCB Financial Group reports a 61% increase in nine months net profit attributable to shareholders. Net profit increased by 79% to $21.08 billion compared to the results in 2023 of $11.78 billion. Net profit for the quarter totaled $7.39 billion relative to the $4.87 billion booked in the prior year's quarter. At $65 per share offered to the public on June 7, 2024, NCB Financial Group Limited announced that it had raised $2.5 billion 
through its additional public offering, APO, which was the largest cash raise since 2022. On August 9, the NCB stock price closed at $50.98. Let's get the latest information on the local and regional stock exchange from Denise Williams. During trading for the period of August 9, 2024, the following companies represent the top three most active stocks that investors bought and sold on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. PVC Pipe Manufacturer Omni Industries Limited with 6,518,142 units represented 30.55% of the trading activity on the stock market. Entertainment and Real Estate Group Pulse Investments Limited with 5,951,065 units represent 27.9% of the trading activity on the stock market. Alternative Energy Provider Wigton Wind Farm Limited ordinary shares with 1,000,000 368,741 units represented 6.42% of the trading activity on the stock market. Moving from the money moves of investors, executives and companies on the stock market, we turn to the Forex market. On August 9, 2024, the Bank of Jamaica reported that US 89. 5 7 million dollars was bought from forex traders while us 79.77 million was sold to forex traders buying directly from the bank of jamaica foreign currency traders sold the us dollar for 157 dollars and 82 cents and bought us dollars for 156 dollars and 53 cents the difference between the buy and sell rate was $1.29, which represents a profit for Forex traders for every US dollar traded. Canadian Forex traders earned a trading profit of $5.02 from transactions with the Bank of Jamaica. The Canadian dollar was sold at $111.21 and bought for $116.23. For traders looking at the British pound, they pocketed a profit of $6.18, selling it for $272 and buying it for $194.54. For our credit report tip of the day, if you're over 50 and planning early retirement, this is the perfect time to focus on rebuilding your credit and leveraging loans to invest in income producing assets. So we have some suggestions. First, make sure you review your credit report. Start by obtaining your credit report from all major credit bureaus, identify any errors and take immediate steps to dispute inaccuracies. Then pay off debts strategically. Focus on paying down high interest debts first. And so consider debt consolidation to make payments more manageable and improve your credit score faster. In regional news, Barbados's cabinet will review the country's trade policy as announced by Minister Marshall Cattle during the Barbados Manufacturers Association's 60th anniversary. She emphasized the policy's role in boosting Barbados's global market position and confirmed the BMA's involvement in the discussions. Cadell praised the BMA's contributions, while immediate past president John Marshall stressed the importance of the BMA government partnership in driving economic diversification. This is something that we expect to be able to do quickly. Uh, we expect to be able to engage all of our partners. We have a, a strong partnership and a good solid track record of working with the BMA. Uh, to be able to tease out and to really unpack what are the challenges that address us and how do we move from, from those minute things that we experience on the ground to having those informed trade policy. We think that this is critical because we realize that our trade agreements and our overarching trade policy emerged and was put together at a specific time in our economic and social history 
and a specific time in the economic and social history uh, of the world. The geopolitics that obtained at the time have shifted slightly, I dare say, and continue to shift. There have been dips in the contribution of the industry to the economy. However, manufacturing remains relevant and our members continue to gain access to new markets all over the world, which speaks to the tenacity of the local manufacturers. The BMA has been a strong voice for manufacturers in Barbados, generally at the trade negotiation and policy de development table, resulting in success for our business from collateral and development pr perspective. Antigua and Barbuda is piloting a project to implement UNESCO's readiness assessment methodology for artificial intelligence, AI. The initiative is led by the Ministry of Information and Communications Technology, as reported by Andrina Athil D'Souza. Minister of Information and Communication Technologies, Utilities and Energy, the Honorable Melford Nicholas, sheds light on how UNESCO's readiness assessment methodology will be pivotal in guiding the country toward responsible use of AI. The UNESCO fostered um, framework um, really is going to seek to put in place mechanisms to ensure that one, um, wherever we're going to source data from to be able to use in any AI applications, that the data itself is reliable, um, it is factual. Um, so that's, that's one of the frameworks. And more importantly, it seeks to protect individuals. The implementation of AI, he says, promises to transform the administrative services within each sector. What AI is going to be able to allow us to, to do is to ensure that some of the routine, mundane um, examination and evaluation or even search or compilation of actionable information can be done in the computer systems as well, provided it has the data. Data protection, which concerns the privacy of individuals, is also a pertinent issue. If we're looking at AI for, for health, uh, purposes as well. You would obviously understand that people's personal information about their health um, is something that is treasured and should be preserved. We have prior legislation dealing with data protection and so these are all of the elements that have to be considered in the framework. The minister emphasizes the importance of multi-stakeholder consultations, the first of which is slated for next week. Well, we want to make it as inclusive and as open as possible. Um, and it is my hope, it is our hope, that we will have um, as engaging a time as possible uh, with all of the stakeholders. A key element of this initiative, he says, will be ongoing stakeholder involvement. But it won't be one level of um, stakeholder consultation. Um, once we begin to integrate systems and they begin to have potential impacts on the society as a whole, we are going to also need to continue with those type of stakeholders. Andrina Athel de Souza, ABS News. In the Bahamas, the breakdown of the family unit has long been cited as a cause of many social issues. In an interview with Our News Bahamas, the executive director of the Grand Bahama Children's Home urged Bahamians to embrace a village mindset particularly for children who are separated from their families through no fault of their own. 28 children from just 6 months to 16 years old currently call the Grand Bahama Children's Home home. And while staff do their best to provide the daily essentials from food, clothing, education and quality time, Executive Director June Hutchison says they still need the love that only a parent or family member can provide. We, we say that we're a village and the village it takes to raise the children. Just to be mindful, A, that the children are here, but they also have parents, they have uh, goddies and aunts. If it's within social service guideline for persons to come and visit, let them know that you care. It's hard for some children who have been here 10, 11, 12 years not having seen parents. It plays on them. There's some psychological scars that go along with that. And it's, it's, it's hard. 
Mental Hutchison says they also want to do more for the mental health of these vulnerable children. children. Because they're in adolescence, they're away from their family, they don't understand sometimes why they've been removed. That's a, that's a hard conversation to have so that they will continue to grow and thrive. We want them to be better than they, that they came to us. And so only in the conversations and what we do and what we show them will they do that. We talk about crime and, you know, we don't want these children because of frustration or because of something that we chose not to do and that they end up on the streets or a life that is not in their best interest. We want to avoid that at all costs. If you notice changes in your child or any child within your community, she urges you to step up and do your part and contact the Department of Social Services. Reporting for Our News, I'm Megan Shepard. In sports, Jamaica dropped the baton and failed to finish in the women's 4x400 meters relay, bringing their Olympic Games campaign to a disappointing end on Saturday. The USA won the event with the Netherlands taking second, while Great Britain secured the bronze medal. Overall, the 2024 Paris Olympics saw Jamaica win only six medals. Meanwhile, the United States took the top spot in the battle for medals on a Sunday as Paris prepared to bring the curtain down on the Olympic Games. The Americans finished level with China on 40 goals each as the Games drew to a close. The USA, however, finished on top of the overall medal table with a total of 126 medals, with China in second place on 91. After their disappointing semi-finals loss to the Dominican Republic in the CONCACAF Championships, the Trinidad and Tobago under-15 girls football team responded with a commanding 3-0 victory in their third-place playoff match versus Guatemala. The Trinidad and Tobago under-15 girls football team took to the field at the Hazy Crawford Stadium one final time in their third-place match versus Guatemala in the CONCACAF under-15 girls championships. TNT would open the scoring in the 12th minute when Sanaya Wilson flew past three players to comfortably finish and make it 1-0. Wilson troubled the Guatemala defense yet again in the second half, but her cross lacked the connection needed. Wilson kept coming down the right flank as a powerful strike was saved by the keeper. TNT would eventually find the back of the net again when Jada Herbert dribbled past a defender to finish emphatically to make it 2-0. Michaela Guerrero would seal TNT's victory when she scored this amazing free kick in the 63rd minute to defeat Guatemala 3-0 and claim third place in the CONCACAF Under-15 Girls Championships. Adrian Lazar TTT Sport. And that's the news on PBCJ. You can follow us on our social media platforms at PBC Jamaica. Thanks for watching.